All right, so continuing our class here, we were looking at a website, a blog, that I happened to find that seems to be a good example of what a, a blog site is. Let's take a little bit of time to then compare and contrast uh, a WordPress site with a Tumblr site, or Tumblr blog and WordPress blog. WordPress is one of the biggest um, software, one of the biggest tools to make a website or a blog. Um, it has, from a statistic I've seen recently, I believe it had about 20% global market share. You think only 20%? Well, that's 20% out of hundreds of millions of sites globally. So the largest search, uh, the largest web design software at the moment is WordPress. There's plenty of others out there also. Wix, Squarespace, Dreamweaver, Frontpage, Tumblr, etc., etc. Uh, but in my company, when we started off, we were always making Dreamweaver websites. That was cutting edge. That's what you wanted to learn. That's what we went to college for. We learned Dreamweaver. We made Dreamweaver websites. And they were great websites, very functional. They did what the client wanted. But as time went on, and clients wanted more things, such as, can you put the ability for people to comment on my blog? Can you put the ability for people uh, to subscribe to my site? Uh, can I log in and edit my site? Those questions then were harder to answer with Dreamweaver. They were doable, but then they were harder to answer. They were harder to implement. Eventually, other software like WordPress came along that answered a lot of those issues out of the box. You are able to add the ability for people to comment on your posts with a click of a button, turn it on or off. You're able to have people share on social media or subscribe to your blog. It's built into WordPress. And the great thing about WordPress is that it can then be expanded with plugins to make it do extra things such as sell a product, have private chat rooms, have one of these features where someone is browsing your site a little pop-up appears here and it says would you like some tech support and you can connect with a person live at that point to answer their question so WordPress now is basically what we make our sites in for any client because it lets us do so much for the client it also lets the client themselves edit the site if they want to because in the old days we would make a Dreamweaver site they'd ask can we edit it we say no problem here's your password and everything use Dreamweaver and edit it and they'll say what's Dreamweaver so okay, after they find out what Dreamweaver was and paid $300 for it, then they can make changes to it. Not paying me, paying the company that made Dreamweaver. In contrast, WordPress, uh, I can set up very easily the ability for a client to make their own changes and protect the changes in that if they were making a change in Dreamweaver and they went in to, to edit some of the code or something, yeah. and they then made a change and they accidentally deleted one character of the site, the whole site would break. Not one command, one line, one character could break the whole site if the client deleted it. But in WordPress, we can set it up so that the client has access to make a new blog post and so forth, but not edit it enough to break the site. Another contrast is the, is the very affordable cost of WordPress compared to Dreamweaver. As I said, it, Dreamweaver is about $300, $400. Uh, WordPress, in contrast, is only $0. You don't have to pay for the WordPress software. You do have to pay for other things, which I'll talk about a little later. But WordPress has a lot of pros and few cons for you that are going to make your own site and for me as in my company to make a, a site for a client. So let's. Uh, this site that, that, that we're looking at here could possibly be made in WordPress. It actually is. I'm looking at the code of the site and I see a telltale sign here WP content that lets me know that this site is made in WordPress. So as I said, 20% of the sites of the world in WordPress. Here's one at random, and it's WordPress. How did you get to that? On the web browser here, you can usually right-click somewhere and select View Page Source, and that'll give you the code, the source, of the website, any website. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll give you a big wall of code behind the scenes of that of those pretty pictures and all of that stuff is code in this case 1426 lines of code but WordPress shields you from all of that if you have experience in these codes then yes you can make these changes does anyone have any experience in HTML No. okay this is HTML code and if you know how to write or edit some of that code, you will be able to do uh, extra things, but not necessary. WordPress shields you from it, and you'll be able to do everything you want in the safe WordPress dashboard. So um, I'm going to jump to another site. It may or may not be WordPress, but It's just the home page here, but that's still a good indicator of, of the whole site. Um, the the big questions for us to answer. Um, if you step back completely is, okay, why do I need a blog? Let me show you an example of a site that you would think, well, this site doesn't need a blog. One of our clients is a Mexican food restaurant that has done really well, that has been featured on the Travel Channel, that has expanded to three locations, that has been written up by the LA Weekly, by a Pulitzer Prize winning critic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is one of our clients, Aquia Texcoco. They have a restaurant in, uh, they first started in Tijuana in 1990. Then they came to the U.S. in about 2008 in Chula Vista. And then they expanded to Los Angeles last year. And as I said, they've been on Travel Channel. I was just at the, at the recording a couple of weeks ago for a couple more shows that are going to appear on other food channels. And this is a client, this is one of our most full featured clients. We made their website in WordPress, we did all their photography, we did their logo, we, we write their blogs, we do their text, and uh, we design their shopping cart, and, and we run their social media, and everything. It's the most full featured. Other clients, we do maybe this or that, but this is the one we do just about everything for. Um, and this 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 client, as I said, it's it's a Mexican food restaurant. I'm I'm going to make everyone hungry, unfortunately, but this is made in WordPress. WordPress is not limited to only making <clears throat> blog sites. It's not limited to to making uh, specifically only a a a classic blog site. It can make this what I would call a hybrid site or a static site, and I'll show you those examples of what those are in a moment. What I'm trying to show here is. Why would a Mexican food restaurant need a blog? Well, this is not your average Mexican food. You're not going to find nachos and California burritos and stuff. You're going to see right at the top, traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. So this is barbacoa de borrego, traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. It's not carne asada and the usual stuff like that. It's lamb, slow roasted. It's slow roasted lamb barbecue in the traditional Mexico City recipe. Texcoco is a city near Mexico City uh, that this recipe came from. And the blog, this site has a blog to educate you about the food. If I go check out, if we, if we check out the blog, well, the address, it's a little hard to spell, but if you just, if you, even, if mis, even if you misspell it, Google will probably give you to the right site because <coughs> this has very good SEO. But if you go to the site and go to the blog, you're going to see a, diff a couple of different kinds of blog posts. Recently, there's been some about you know, the self-aggrandizing posts, the one about, look at us, look at how good we are. But we've also got blog posts about the food. Uh, what is lamb barbecue? What is pulque? 
what uh, what's so special about your quesadillas, etc. So this blog, the purpose of this blog is to educate people on the food. Let me go back a little bit. Pulque, drink of the Aztec gods. How many of you have ever heard of pulque before? A couple of people. Pulque uh, is, an, is a beverage, a traditional Mexican beverage that comes from the maguey plant. This might look familiar. It might kind of look like the agave plant. Does anyone know what does the agave plant graduate to? Tequila. The maguey plant graduates into pulque, which is an alcoholic beverage served at this restaurant. You might never have heard of it. This blog post here will teach you a little bit about the history of pulque and about it being served at the restaurant. A little And a few pictures of it and so forth. These can be flavored. They can have fruit flavors. The, the basic pulque has a very sort of yeasty flavor because uh, it's fermented. Uh, and you can that you can order it flavored, uh, like with nuts or mangoes and so forth. And then you read that, and you think that's interesting. Well, what else? Tell me about the amazing maguey plant. And you go read that blog post, and you read another one, and you share it with friends and family. And then this helps this site rank higher on Google and Bing and Yahoo and so forth because it gets it's getting traffic from the blog. It's enticing people to come to read the blog. Question? For, so for like a restaurant to have a blog, would that be another position for the business to have like blog writers? Like how do you, how do you even get that? That, that is one of the topics we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, about who's going to write this. Yeah. And ideally, you want to have someone that likes to write and wants to write and can write about the restaurant. If, if I'm the restaurant owner, I'm busy running the restaurant. I don't have time to write, even though, of course, I know everything about my restaurant, but I don't have time. So ideally, there is a person uh, that that is their job position. Or job title, um, such as you know, this company has hired my company, and someone on on my staff then writes it, or I write it, or whatever. So we do that, but not everyone can have someone write for them. So yeah, someone will have to take on that responsibility, and we'll talk about pros and cons of that a little bit later. But there is someone that you know, the 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 cooks in the kitchen are not writing the these blogs, even though they would have a great insight into it, but the, they they just don't want to or don't have the time to write. So the purpose of this blog for this client is to educate people on the food. And then also to show off here, uh, look at how we've had these celebrity chefs visit, um, you know, Andrew Zimmern and Marcella Valladolid and uh, Jonathan Gold reviewed and so forth, Rick Bayless, etc. So there's different kinds of blog posts here to show the fame of the restaurant because fame breeds fame, popularity breeds popularity, and that if our customers see these famous people are coming to eat here, I'll eat here too. They recently opened, well last year opened in Commerce, which is right south of, San, of Los Angeles, so then that's getting attention for the people in Los Angeles to visit the restaurant. I go over to page two, there's more blog posts there about the craft beer served, about uh, lamb. You might not have thought of it as, as, as Mexican, but it is. Then we've got the, uh, the, uh, the homemade um, aguas frescas, the, the, the beverages. So basically educating people on, on everything um, that, that is being offered at the restaurant. And these blog posts again are adhering to the different things that we'll be talking about in this class about dividing the page into sections with headings we'll see how to do that of course having links internal also talking about external links why we would want to do that a little later uh, pictures and so forth the ability to share to social media the ability for people to comment we'll talk about well how often should I write? 
How much should I write? We'll talk about all of those things. But I want to show you here an example about, you might not have thought that this particular business needed a blog, but really what modern SEO will tell you is uh, every website needs a blog with relevant timely content to be found on the search engines. Question? So if you have a website that is strictly informational and you're earning um, money through advertisement, is it better to have just static or do you want static and a blog? It's, I don't see how the, you want two of the same thing. No, you, you wouldn't want two of the same thing, but do you mean duplicate content, or what do you mean of the same yeah, thing? I'm wondering if it's better to just be a static uh, website, if it's information, uh, it's travel blog, so just it's not really a blog or travel website. How would you blog to that as well? Well, a little bit later we'll have an activity where we'll answer that exactly, because we'll I'll take everyone's you know, site and we will brainstorm what we can blog about. But in short, every kind of site can have content to blog about. Specifically, I think with what you're saying, I still would have a blog because you might have this information that is evergreen, but you could still be blogging about experiences to entice people, you know, to, to do what you want them to do on your site. So I would still include a blog on the site and we'll talk about how to add a add a blog to your existing site. It doesn't have to start off as a blog. We can add a blog to an existing static site. We can have both. That's a good segue to show you here. This other client that we have, another restaurant, um, this Italian food restaurant, this site is also made in WordPress, but this site does not have a blog. This particular client didn't get the package with a blog, but their social media and other, and other aspects have caused them to be very well received and so forth. Look at how well they're doing over on Yelp and TripAdvisor. Nearly perfect star five stars out of 222 reviews and uh, excellent ratings on TripAdvisor and so forth. And they're on YouTube and Twitter and so forth. So not they don't have a blog, but this is still a WordPress site. You can make this, which is called a static website, in WordPress. It's got a home page, it's got the hours of operation and a phone number, and it's got a way to contact them and events and the menu and so forth, but it, it doesn't have a blog post. It doesn't have anything written every month or week or quarter or whatever. And in this case, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, they're not struggling because they are still directing their endeavors to other avenues. If they were not also on Yelp and Twitter and so forth and didn't have a blog, these guys would probably not be found because they had they would have such a small footprint online. Because they're also on Twitter and on Yelp and TripAdvisor and YouTube and they're out there to, to be found by the world, then they're found. They um, are in contrast with this client that they're on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere and they have the blog and that's resulting in being on Travel Channel four times. So both of these are WordPress sites. Static site. Let me show you an example. This is my personal blog uh, about what are my hobbies. I like to collect comic books and I've got a blog about comic books and this is the classic blog in that there's a home page and then there's, a, there's an article, there's a blog post the latest one, notice the date there, May 17th, and then if I publish a new blog post, it pushes the older one down. There's that one from January. When that one was published, it, it pushed down this one from October, and then the older posts. So this is the classic blog in that the newest content pushes down the older content. The home page is always changing then because your latest blog posts will always show up first. That's a classic blog and that is the default of WordPress. When you first set up WordPress it'll be like this. It'll be like a blog. You might want a website that is more like Italianissimo here where it's static and I'll show you how to change that. Change your WordPress so that it's a static site. 
in the middle of those two is Texcoco because their home page you know we can change it as necessary to add new specials or call to calls to action and so forth it's static overall but the blog is right there also so this would be a hybrid site and this can also be made in WordPress so we have the purely blog site classic blog site we have the static site and we have the hybrid site and all three of those can be made with WordPress So I've shown examples of WordPress sites. Let's look at examples of Tumblr sites. Um, Tumblr is another popular blogging platform. It could be a platform also to make a website, static website, and so forth. But its character is much more short attention span. I'm going to talk about long form blog content and short form blog content. And WordPress is more of the long form blog. You want to write longer content there. And in contrast, Tumblr is more short-form content, maybe at the most one paragraph, or maybe just one picture and one sentence, and that's a blog post in Tumblr. It's just that the character of people using Tumblr is much more about, well, show me more, show me more, what's new, what's next? And that might be perfect for your particular site, or it might be way too much work and it doesn't apply to your site. So, but we'll contrast. The way I want to do that is I want to show you some links here. Let's go back to the network folder to show you these links that I've prepared. So let's go back to the desktop. Open computer. We'll go to network location, classroom data Z again. Back down to my folder, Campos Blogging, and then copy the, the file called Campos Blogging Links. Just drag it to your desktop or put it on your flash drive, but copy that over first. And once you've copied it over, then double click it to view it. And again, I'll turn on the printer later if you want to print this stuff, but this is a collection of some links. Let's go ahead and load that up. If you have any trouble finding that, call me over. Does anyone need some help finding that file? So if you copy it over, we'll look at these links a little bit later, general blogging links that I've found for you. And then uh, let's take a look at some of these over here under Tumblr. There's going to be some tips. We'll look at that a little bit later. I want to see some examples of websites made in Tumblr. So let's look at number two inside of the Tumblr links section. Uh, you should be able to click that link, or uh, actually control click it. Hold control on the keyboard and then click the, the link. Question? So let's go ahead and open up the second link there and let's see what a Tumblr blog looks like. This link right here takes us over to this really good website that I recommend you, you make a note of, Mashable.com. Mashable is a great website 
for you to keep up with social media and blogging and technology and all of that. And here it's got a primer for uh, Tumblr's latest tools. So as we use Tumblr, these will make more sense. But notice on Tumblr, we have the ability to quickly publish these kinds of posts. We can do text posts, photo posts, video posts, and so forth. And so this blog post by Amy May Elliott from February of this year talks about the different blog post content that we can add to Tumblr. So I'm going to be providing you with uh, various links as time goes on. This particular one um, is an article about using Tumblr. <coughs> Let's go back to the document. Let's go back to the links. Go back to that link file. And we'll open up an example of a Tumblr blog. Rolling Stone, number three. So control click item number three. Back on the on the links file. <coughs> so Rolling Stone, obviously they've been around a while, they are a magazine, but they also have an online presence. Here they have um, a blog post with a few pictures and then a link. And then there's uh, another one over here and then another one. Notice these are pictures. If something catches your attention, then you go um, then you go read it if you want. I'm seeing as you browse, you're probably seeing a few more animations than you might on the usual site. Have you also noticed at the top that it tells you when it was published? This was published 11 a.m. This one over here, 11.50. The latest one, 4.31 today. Before that, at 2 o'clock. Before that, at 1 o'clock. So this is being published much more frequently than you would think a traditional blog. Of course, they probably have a variety of of uh, authors to contribute, but this is the character of, of Tumblr, a much more short attention span type of blog. Yes? So this is kind of something like Instagram? It's kind of like a social network, yes. Okay. Instagram is a social network, or Twitter, or so forth, where you people put out quick things, mm -hmm. Pinterest and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of the character of Tumblr, so it's almost like a social network in a sense not just a blog platform. Tumblr might be a good fit for you, yeah. Notice we've got, okay, a picture that catches our attention perhaps, and then usually a link, like this one that I'm interested in up here. See great moments in MTV's history recreated as comics in a new 120 minutes inspired zine. So okay, I see that, that interests me, I click the link, and what that takes me is, it, where it takes me actually is to their whole official rollingstone.com site. So in a sense also Tumblr is a site to drive traffic to other places. Maybe you've got YouTube videos and you want to get more traffic to your YouTube videos. Maybe you've got an Etsy store. You want to drive traffic there, but you post on Tumblr and have the hundreds of millions of people there see your content and go back to Etsy to buy your item. Here I saw something that interested me, a little snippet of it on Tumblr, and then I actually clicked on the link and it took me to the their website where I can read more. So one of the characteristics of Tumblr is a, a big reliance on graphics and animated graphics.
so let's go back to the to the links and let's look at another Tumblr blog or Tum blog. Another Tumblr blog. I've got here Entertainment Weekly. They're another old media um, publication that has jumped on line. Let's go back and look at the entertainment Tumblr site. You might be noticing, look at the address, rollingstone.tumblr.com, uh, entertainmentweekly.tumblr.com, awesome people hanging out together.tumblr.com. So the default of a Tumblr blog is that it's got tumblr.com in the name. If I wanted victorsbakery.com, and I created it in Tumblr, by default it would be victorsbakery.tumblr.com. If I wanted it to be victorsbakery.com, I've got here a tip on number seven, how to get a custom domain. It's free to use WordPress and to create WordPress content. It's free to create a Tumblr blog and publish on Tumblr. That's all free. There are some things, though, as I get to them, that are not free. For example, your name. If I want victorsbakery.com, I am going to need to pay for that at a service provider company, and which I'll talk about when we get to it. But I'm taking a look at entertainmentweekly.tumblr.com. So again, uh, an eye-catching picture, but then a link to the fuller article. I'm seeing here also categorization in the in the in the terms of uh, tags, such as uh, Daredevil. I click on that, and that'll show me all the blog, all the posts on Tumblr about that tag. So all the tum uh, all the Daredevil posts. <coughs> so again, uh, you can have subscribers here. They're going to follow your blog on Tumblr and then as they find something that they're interested in they will be alerted they will be notified that you've got new content that also happens on WordPress then they can um, read they can watch the video they can uh, follow up and so forth and I'm seeing here you see these um, hearts this is 111 this one over here 131 this one's got 535. What those are in the parlance of Tumblr are notes. If I click on one of these hearts, one of these notes, it tells me 535 notes have been attached to this post, which basically means Taylor Moss 19 likes this, Brianne reblogged this, Drops of Jupiter likes this. Um, Barry Snow Wallen likes this, etc., etc. It tells you, so you might see W.C. Vengross <coughs> commented on this. So Tumblr calls all of these notes. When someone likes your post, when someone shares your post, when someone comments on your post, these are all notes in the parlance of Tumblr. And notice there's a lot of people. These posts from Tumblr are getting activity, hundreds if not more. Over on Rolling Stone, 71 notes here, 265 there, 94 here. Rolling Stone, Tumblr page, when I get to the end, I have go to page 2 or 3, it has newer or older. I can go from page to page. Did you notice that on Entertainment Weekly you don't get to the end? As you scroll down, more stuff appears. As you scroll a little bit more, more appears. There's no end to it. See that loading post and automatically 10 new things loaded up. This is known as the infinite scroll. This is one of the things that uh, Tumblr is, is, is very well known for. That you keep people looking at more of your content uh, non-stop 
of course if you've got the content people will scroll and find what they care about and then further read read it like this one David Duchovny says the new X-Files revival script made him cry and I want to read about that so I click on that and that takes me back to entertainmentweekly.com where I can read the whole article where I can click their advertisement and they make money where I can continue to read more of their content where I can perhaps add more comments and such so we're seeing that Tumblr has a different kind of style it's the short form blog it's almost like a social network it might feel like uh, Instagram or, or Twitter or Pinterest in that there's uh, quick posts much more often than a carefully crafted 100 word blog post it's often a picture some sort of multimedia and then a link some sort of enticement for people to follow through I'll just show you one more and then we'll go on. I just thought this one was really interesting. This is awesome people hanging out together. .tumblr.com. David Bowie and Iggy Pop in Moscow, 1976. Howard Cosell and John Lennon. Judy Garland and Jack Warner and Lauren Bacall, 1954. Steve Martin and Don Rickles, Mick Jagger and Andy Warhol, Joan Jett, uh, Debbie Harris, David, uh, David, help me out, David, someone, and Joey Ramone. So, just this has got also a different kind of style here. It's just a big picture. Notice the design is really focused on the picture, and nothing really else. Maybe a video here and there, but. Um, I don't see a way people are making money on this, but this is just for the love of it, for the sharing something interesting. Joan Baez and Jimi Hendrix. So anyway, these are some examples of Tumblr blogs. Questions? Um, how do you know when you could put something on <clears throat> That's a simple question with a big answer. Um, this particular site's purpose just seems to be sharing photos of famous people. Most likely the author of this blog does not have the copyright ability to share this. Probably this whole website is one big copyright violation. But depending on what kind of content you're sharing, that may or may not be a problem. because especially like on social media like Twitter and Facebook and such companies often want you to share their stuff because then you become an advertiser for them for free so I can't quite give you an answer about when can you do this I kind of though have to tell you assume that you cannot share other people's content even though it's so easy to click that share button it really is better to publish your own content but depending on the original copyright holder, you may or may not be able to do so. Question? Pinterest, I found, is a place where people take pictures from everywhere and mm -hmm. assemble boards. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a story where I was following a pin, I clicked to it, and I got to a note from Pinterest saying this was taken down to, to mm -hmm. copyright infringement requests from the yeah. owner. Yeah. So they do track them down and they just remove them. They could track it down, yeah. So best case scenario, they just remove the, the, the picture or the pin or whatever and you're okay. Worst case scenario, a lawyer comes after you. But this is the thing about what are you trying to do online. If I'm trying to do like my comic book blog over here, everything that I'm posting is stuff that I created. I shot that video and I put that picture and I wrote that text. So 
it's all my content. I could easily be sharing other people's reviews or other people's photos, a photo officially from Marvel.com, and maybe Marvel wants that, that I share that Spider-Man comic book because then they will sell more Spider-Man comic books. But maybe I posted or reposted or shared content from someone else's blog and says, please don't do that. That's my content. You don't quite know. But really, you want to err on the side of caution. If it's not your content, you might have a problem. But I can't tell you for sure either way. Yes? How do you protect yourself? You have to decide how much you or how comfortable you are being online. These posts that I'm putting on my personal blog, I'm fine if people steal them and share them all over the internet. I'm not trying to make any money off of this. This is my hobby. We're kind of the same way with, with the other clients over here, you know, the Texcoco client. We want people to share this stuff so more people come to the restaurant. But maybe my other site where I'm going to be selling my artwork, I don't want that to be stolen and posted all over the place without a link back to buy it. So if I am trying to sell my drawings and paintings and such, maybe I don't upload it in the highest quality. Maybe I put a watermark in the corner. Maybe I put on the bottom next to it, copyright Victor Campos. But really, you have to be, you have, you have to accept the fact that anything you put online could be stolen. If you just don't want something stolen, don't put it online, unfortunately. It's unfortunately uh, guilty until proven innocent in that case. But really, anything you put online, it might not happen for five or ten years, but anything you put online, can be passed around, can be stolen, and you have very little recourse because this stuff travels all over the place. So as I said, maybe don't upload your highest quality versions. Put a watermark in the corner. Put a copyright on the bottom of it. Maybe put a copyright right across the whole face of it to detract people. But anything you put online could spread throughout the internet and you have very, it's very difficult to, to deal with it. So let's take our last break. When we come back, we've seen examples of, of sites. Let's come back and then we'll brainstorm. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can what you can write. You have an idea that you want to write, but you don't know what to write, we'll brainstorm.